Nick Marshall thought he was God's gift to women, but he's about to discover... That's buns. ...what women think. What did you say? Nothing. I can hear what women think. Rolling. Hey, guys. Whoa, lighten up that aftershave, buddy. The notion of being able to read the minds of women is, I think, a kind of a, a male fantasy because it would answer a lot of questions that we simply don't have a lot of answers for. Why do I always feel like he's checking me out? There's things, there are thoughts in women's heads in this movie that I think men aren't aware of. Oh, God, I just looked at his crotch. <laughs> oh, I just looked at it again. <laughs> for guys to hear what women are thinking, I think it's going to be a very interesting experience. And I could women will probably smile in recognition. She thinks you're overpaid. Okay. What? I love the comedy in the movie. Okay, cut. But on top of that, the picture became more romantic than even I had thought it would be. Total shocker. He's like a nice guy. That's a great love story. I mean, it really is. It's really sweet. Don't fall for a guy at work. Don't fall for a guy at work. Why? Why what? I mean, the idea of this movie is timeless. I can't believe this is what I'll be wearing the last night I'm a virgin. <laughs> What do women want? Let's just take it slow and see how it goes. Slow is really good. It depends on any given moment. You free tonight? All right, here we go. <laughs> Mel Gibson and Helen Hunt star in What Women Want from director Nancy Myers. I think the thing that attracted me to this particular project is uh, it's a good, funny premise because, I mean, there's a, there is a barrier uh, between the sexes. If men are from Mars, and women are from Venus, and you speak Venusian. The world can be yours. I was drawn to the idea of a man who could hear inside a woman's head because it's obviously we're foreign to them. Do you want to know all this about me? Uh, to me, that's funny. You know, to me, uh, there was a lot of um, room there for comedy. That girl we met last night at the club? Nothing happened after you put her in the cab, right? It did? Something happened? But she said she had to be in bed early. Well, I had her in bed by 11. Or was it a quarter to? Yeah. Well. Gibson plays a high-powered executive at a top Chicago ad agency. Well, he's the man on top. He doesn't even go to work till 10.30 in the morning. You know, he sleeps late and doesn't even carry a briefcase because he doesn't need to. You couldn't show up on time the day. You know you're being promoted. Nick Marshall has made up all the ads for beer commercials using sexy women to sell products. You want babes in bikinis? He's your man. And suddenly it occurs to advertisers that women are making a lot of decisions about what's being bought and my character in this movie gets that and the Mel Gibson's character is a little late in getting it. It's a woman's world out there. And getting into a woman's psyche is not exactly your strong suit. I play a woman who was uh, hired to be Mel Gibson's boss. So how do you turn that down? Um, he's sure that he's going to get a promotion to be the head of the agency. Hello, I'm Darcy. And much to his surprise and chagrin, a woman is hired to be his boss, and that's me. So, Nick, what'd you come up with? I don't suppose uh, anybody's interested in an idea involving the Swedish bikini team. I do know them all personally. Uh, <laughs> Gibson's ability to combine comedy and character, as well as his willingness to take risks, garnered the admiration of his co-stars. I think he's just, you know, he's smart, he's got a great sense of humor, and he's willing. You have to be willing to be silly and willing to go too far. and and also use your brain to keep it grounded in enough reality that people care while they're laughing, you know? And uh, he's great at all those things. <laughs> and he was fully aware that this was a real departure for him. And um, I was always like, you know, privately saying to myself, like, Mel Gibson's drinking a cup of coffee, you know, at his desk. It was so normal because he does extraordinary things in his movies normally. You know, even if he plays a cop, you know, he's the cop that jumps off the back of a truck into a car. We're so used to seeing him do superhuman things. So seeing him in these domestic situations was really interesting. I think he had a great time doing something different. He just comes to the set with himself and his mind, which is like a whip, and he puts it all in his head. And what happens is he's improvising coming up with ideas right there in the moment. And that's very fun to work with. Here you go, Nick. In addition to his new boss, the other women in Nick's life include Marissa Tomei as the coffee shop girl he'd like to date, Lauren Holly as his ex-wife, and Ashley Johnson as his 15-year-old daughter. I have to go stay with him because my mother just got remarried. You can take care of your old man for a change. Cook for me, get me my slippers. <laughs> yeah, that'll be happening. She's very rebellious and it's, she's very embarrassed teen. I mean, everybody, all teens are really embarrassed by what their parents do. That's mine. Where, where are you? 
In order for Nick to better understand the minds of women, his boss has given him a special box of products, which he opens one night while home alone. You go, girl. I'm a bitch, I'm a lover, I'm a child, I'm a mother, I'm a sister. Oh, you don't get products like control top pants? Oh, no, 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 that's the thing, it was the big surprise. I won't say what size he wore, but... And he literally could not put them on without practically putting his foot through them every time. And then he did actually wax his legs because I, I thought he needed to know what it really was. And we have the right leg and the very hot wax. It's a very, very hot wax. That's the first time I waxed my leg. It, it doesn't hurt. Oh! Oh, shh! Ah, okay. That's the manhood. Yeah. Well, you know, hey pretty easy actually a little wax on the lower uh, uh, leg with a uh, some kind of like cloth pad stick it on there let it sit for a little while it's kind of nice yeah I don't know why women are playing that wax on their legs the script says it hurts so you better make it look painful <laughs> for women it hurt it hurts you know and when he smelled Gibson you know it was like yeah what's the big deal he didn't think it was such a big deal why would anyone ever do that more than once why would anyone ever do the other leg? But apparently, like, that was the least painful place to do it. So they tell me, I'm saying, what are you complaining about? This doesn't hurt. And they said, well, you should try doing your bikini line. Like, I'm going to try that, you know. <laughs> Dad! Hi! What are you doing? Exfoliating. It's so funny. We come home, and he's in pantyhose, and he has on lipstick and mascara. Nice nail polish. There. It's like, oh, my God, this is the worst thing that could ever happen to me. Especially in front of my boyfriend. Good night. No, 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 wait, I come back. I While trying to explain the situation to his daughter, Nick experiences a mishap that changes his life. He ends up slipping on some bath beads and knocking his head on the bathtub, then he's electrocuted. And when he wakes up the next day, he's a very strange thing happening to him. He's hearing what women think. Morning, Mr. Marshall. It happens with the woman who works in his building, who's the door woman. Thank you, Flo. You're welcome, my little sweet buns. What did you say? Me? Nothing. Back row! Back row! Action! And he decides to walk to work, and every woman that he passes in the park, he can hear every thought. Oh. Oh. And uh, he thinks he's having some kind of nervous breakdown or going crazy, so it sort of makes him a little more than concerned. He goes to work and all the women that he thinks you know fall over him and adore him actually don't like him at all what a schmuck which is kind of a shocker to him because he never suspected or expected to hear some of the things that he then does do you realize that i have an ivy league education and that running your stupid errands has put me into therapy <laughs> Okay, cut. Play back. Director Myers, who co-wrote Private Benjamin, Baby Boom, and The Father of the Bride films, and directed The Parent Trap, brought her unique sensibility to this film. Okay, that's a good one to have. Nancy, she brings a wit, and she has a knowledge about what's funny. She has a particular way of looking at the world and the people in it that is unique. It doesn't have to knock it. He can just turn it around like... Oh. <laughs> Nancy's absolutely, you know, in love with... Tracy Hepburn movies, and so I think she's going for a classic feel, you know, um, which just basically I think means smart relationships between people and and a good funny bone too. And she has all that. We're all a little closer now. <laughs> Here's what I think. She's done a lot of successful movies. She has the Midas touch, and she tells great stories. She brings to it the expertise of knowing what she wants. She knows instinctively when something's funny, when a shot looks right. But if you had a bigger reaction to her. Her bent is comedy. I mean, she uh, she goes for the incongruous things, yet truthful. You know, the, the truthful things about what women might be thinking. You know, it ranges all over the place. You know, within one minute, you'll hear thoughts diametrically opposed to one another on just about anything. This feels like a date. He needs to go. Well, I'm out of here. I think the fun of the movie is that men and women are sort of <laughs> clueless about what women want exactly. It's too uh, complex to put into words. Oh, why did I tell him to stop asking me out? I'm an idiot! 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 Hey, Nick. How's it going? Lola, the character played by Tomei, outwardly expresses disinterest in Nick. I can't take no for an answer. About what? About what? 
I turn him down. I do turn him down a lot because because he's he's a gigolo, you know, and I know it. And he's he's too good looking. And it's written all over his face, and I don't I don't want to risk it. I'm not usually like this on a first date. It's just been so amazing all night. And been so sensitive, so understanding. To hear what a woman's thinking when you're fooling around with her, which happens to Mel Gibson's character, torture. Is Britney Spears on Leno tonight? <gasps> The way I like to think of it, she's a big part of his evolution in understanding women, and she um, she gets the sex right with him. I can do this better. Wanna bet? Yeah. He finally gets it. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a little gift she gives to him. Along with the personal benefits that result from Nick's newfound power, he also uses it as a strategic weapon at work. Oh. Great photographs. No clue they're all Margaret Burke White. They're not all Margaret Burke White, are they? Yeah, they are. He um, finally gets a handle on it and starts to use it, but he uses it the wrong way. He starts to undermine his boss. He begins to dig a hole underneath her, hoping she'll fall through, which she does. What do you think, Nick? I don't know. It seems kind of, what's the word? Parochial. Uh, parochial to me. Um, what? What do you think, Darcy? Because he can read her thoughts, he basically steals all her ideas. So he just beats her to the punch all the time and she doesn't know what the hell is happening to her. And she's feeling unsure of herself and of course she can't imagine that it's because he can read her mind. Well, if you need any help. Oh, I'll be picking your brain. You got it. You know, it puts this kind of weird monkey wrench into their getting to know each other. In the middle of a scene that isn't about how attractive he is at all, that might be one of 30 thoughts that she has, but he hears it. What I'd like to propose. Mm, he's proposing so soon? Cool. Oh. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> For director Myers, Hunt's ability to convey the many layers of her character made her ideal for the role. She's the girl. Helen was the only person I wanted uh, for Darcy because she just has this innate strength and intelligence. And I thought she'd be a great person to, to get inside of. And this is a movie about getting inside women's heads. Can't believe I have butterflies in my stomach. Feels like the first day of school. She looks like she can really, you know, kick some corporate butt, but she um, also has the acting smarts and the, and the soul and heart of, of someone that uh, is, is able to show much more and be very vulnerable, which is also required. Now, you know this is a tough one for us to get. It would be a tough one for anybody to get, but if we got it, that's all we'd need. I hear you. The on-screen chemistry of the cast benefited from Gibson's fun-loving attitude behind the scenes. Oh, my God! <laughs> this is what smoking can do to you. Stunt your throat. He's loose. He's incredibly loose, and everybody likes working on the movie because of him. Now, there's no more witty repartee <laughs> here. It's all over. He's a great storyteller. He's got a fantastic laugh. He laughs all the time. It's, his personality is contagious, and you want to be around him. Yeah. We're always making silly jokes or throwing things in that are way too off color. Mel and I constantly. <laughs> it's, a really, it's a really fun movie, so we've had a really fun time on it. I can do this scene forever. <laughs> Over the course of the production, the goal of the filmmakers was always to find an element of truth in the comedic situations. That was phony. Cut it. Let's go again. Yeah. Nancy says, crying's easy, laughing's hard, you know. And it's like, she's right. You know, you have to be very precise. And there has to be a lot of truth uh, involved in comedies. You can't just be goofy. You have to be truthful in some aspect. Men are stupider, it's true. Will you stop it? Oh, they are. What do you mean they? Are you officially a woman now? Well, if people are laughing, it means it's, it's, they're recognizing something in it. I'm free. Just call me anytime. I'm flirting. What's wrong with me? To me, the best moments in the movie are when Mel and Helen are relating in, in the most real fashion and where their eyes connect and they share a laugh over something and when they come through, you know, and the real affection they had for each other comes through. You've worn control top pantyhose? Yeah. Uh, and how did you look in them? <sighs> Hot. <laughs> That's what they do great. They make it real. It is the combination of comedy, romance, and believability that ultimately provide the heart of the story. This movie is funny, it's smart, and it's got Mel Gibson and Helen Hunt. I mean, I think, you know, audiences are gonna love it. Aww. What women want is a really fun question. When I started in this business. They want the same kind of things men want. They want success and want to have a certain amount of dignity. But I think that for all of our progress, we still, we're still men and women and we're still trying to figure each other out and we're different. Tell her grande. Grande. 
Or at least I like to think so. <laughs> Next. I have no clue how men think. I barely know how women think, but I don't think it's similar. I think it's, I think it's very different. Nick Marshall looking right at me. At least he's looking at my eyes and not down my blouse. I think you can spend a long time trying to figure it out and what women want. It's got something to do with chocolate. Oh, I say. Chocolate and conversation. Oh, you were listening. 